Hi, I'm Jamie from Portola Paints. One of the most commonly asked questions that we get is what is the difference between Roman clay and lime wash? So today we're gonna highlight a few of the similarities and differences. When you're looking online and even from afar, it can be sort of hard to differentiate between the two. They both have a sort of natural variation in color. So again, when you're looking at them, they have this modeled effect to them. The main difference is going to be the application. So lime wash is typically done with a brush. Roman clay is going to be done with putty knives. And so the brush application for lime wash is it's very fast, right? It's a sort of random overlapped brush technique that you're using. Um, most important thing is that you work continuously from one corner of a wall all the way to the next corner without stopping. So identifying certain details of your space are going to be really helpful to know if this is the right product for you and if it's something that you can achieve. Um, so for example, a standard eight foot ceiling, you know, 12 foot long wall, something like that, that's a pretty straightforward thing because you kind of have to work your way from corner to corner, um, almost as if you like poured a bucket of water on the sidewalk and the way that the water is going to move across it. So um, making sure that your space is appropriate for it, especially if this is a DIY application. Another thing to mention is that lighter colors are much more subtle and so therefore they're more forgiving. So again, if you're new to this or you're doing larger spaces, things like that, um, starting with lighter colors, mid to light colors are probably going to be a good way to go because it's easier to pull it off. Um, darker colors show a lot more variation, a lot more depth, um, and can also be show imperfections more. So if you're trying to do a dark color with a cove ceiling or, or, or you know, big, big walls, stair walls, things like that, um, those can be really tricky. So in those cases, you need more people, scaffold, whatever it might be. Um, so setting yourself up for success, I think, is a really, really good thing so that everybody's happy in the end of this. So Roman clay is done with putty knives. And so typically I'm using anywhere from a you know, six inch to a 10 inch knife. In some cases, we use plastic knives as well. So the nice thing about the clay is that it is a bit more time consuming because you're, you're putting it on in these very, very thin layers. It's also very important for the clay to have smooth walls for it to be as easy as it can. If you have textured walls, lime wash is a much easier application. Or, I mean, you can still do Roman clay over a textured wall. It might not look the same, or you might have to end up doing more layers to get it to be as smooth as it, as it you know, really is intended to be. A common misconception is that the Roman clay is actually more textured, when in reality, it's very, very smooth. And that's where the, the skill of the putty knife kind of comes in. The nice thing is, is with the Roman clay application is that it's very, very forgiving and there's, there's no surprises. So as you're working with the material, you do have to go back and forth and do more layers to get the sort of buildup of the material. Um, but as you're, you're building that up and it, it sort of dries as you're working with it. So there's a little bit of a, a learning curve to figure out how to manipulate it. But once you sort of understand the flow of the sort of two steps forward, one step backwards approach to, to applying it. It's literally drying as you're doing it. So you're seeing exactly what's going on. You're seeing the modeling. All of that stuff is happening in real time. And that's where sort of part of my kit is, you know, the six inch knife, 10 inch knife, plastic knives, um, fine grit sandpaper, all of these things are something that you can use to sort of control the Roman clay. So again, a bit more time consuming, really, really ideal for smooth walls. Um, very, very controllable, very, very user friendly. Um, a lot of people get intimidated by the fact that it's done with putty knives and not a brush or a roller. But I find that as long as you take the time that it, that, you know, that is necessary to finish a wall or a room, um, it is a very, very doable thing. It's really not as complicated as it seems. The lime wash is very, very quick but not as controllable. It's a little bit more of a natural material, so it will bloom in sort of unpredictable ways sometimes. So it's beautiful, it's fast, it's natural, um, but again, it's, it's, it's really important to understand what the product is and what it isn't so that you are making the right decision for your project. All right, so in terms of durability, the Roman clay, um, being a very smooth surface, is actually quite washable. Um, I usually use a kitchen sponge, just like a damp sponge, to clean scuffs and things like that. Uh, it is, because it also is more of a sort of paint plaster kind of hybrid material, it is more forgiving in terms of touch up and things like that as well. So it is a bit more time consuming to apply, but 
the sort of long-term results of it in terms of being able to wash it, clean it, touch it up, all that stuff is definitely a benefit. Um, the lime wash, like I said, it, it is a bit of a, a quick and relatively easy application. It is not a washable material though. So it is a bit more like, imagine like uh, suede shoes versus like smooth leather, right? The suede, like the lime wash is going to be more porous. Um, so oils, dirt, things like that can penetrate it and it can be harder to clean those things out. Uh, the Roman clay being a bit smoother, you can sometimes we'll use the, the sandpaper or a sponge and it actually cleans quite easily. Um, the biggest things to avoid are going to be grease and oil. So, you know, in terms of another common question is, can I use it in a kitchen? Can I use it in a bathroom? The answer is yes to both for both products. The lime wash, again, being a little bit more delicate, you'd want to be mindful of, of where you're using it. So. Um, moisture, steam, things like that aren't going to hurt either one of these things. So you can use it in a bathroom uh, with a shower, not in a shower, but in a bathroom with a shower, tub, etc. Totally fine. Um, but things to look for are, do you have a backsplash or tile behind your sink, right? So if there's a tile behind your sink and there's glass around the shower and tile around the tub or what have you, then if the material is just in the room, it's not going to get affected. So similar to a kitchen, I wouldn't use it behind a cooktop um, to replace a backsplash, but if you have stone behind your cooktop, you have tile around your sink, if it's just in the room, again, it's not going to be you know, directly in contact with oil, grease, things like that. So um, it's really about looking at the space and sort of figuring out, like, is this the right product for the room? If you're trying to use it in, you know, to replace a backsplash, you know, I've done it before, but sort of do at your own risk and something that, you know, there are other sealers available that you could poss possibly try um, to, to see if you can get something to protect it um, for that type of application. So all of our products are manufactured locally here in Los Angeles. Um, we try to source all of the raw materials as locally as possible. All the products are made with zero VOC formulas, zero VOC pigments. So you know, little to no outgassing, very, very user friendly in terms of the, uh, you know, odors and things like that. Um, safe to use in your bedroom, in your kid's room, all that stuff. You don't have to leave the house for a month, nothing like that. These things are typically by the time it's dry, you can be in the room and it's, it's, it's not harmful for, for the person applying it or to be in the room shortly thereafter. So all this information is available on our website, portolapaints.com. We have videos. FAQ, coverage rates, pricing, all of that stuff is available. You can purchase online, you can purchase and pick up in store. We also are more than happy to help assist on the phone or through email. So if you have questions about color, custom inquiries, anything like that, we are here to help. So feel free to give us a call or reach out through email.